Hello everyone, welcome back to UGC NET English Detailed Lectures. In the previous class, we had the topic, the history of Indian English literature. With this class, we will cover one of Jeffrey Tosis' poems, that is, The House of Fame. The House of Fame, written between 1374 to 1385. Jeffrey Chaucer, 1340 or 45 to 1400. And we know there, the House of Fame is a Middle English poem. And it was written between 1374 and 1385. And the poem was written during Jeffrey Chaucer's Italian period. We had a divided Chaucer's career, literary career, into three periods. French period, Italian period and English period. So this poem, that is, the House of Fame belongs to his poems or compositions of the Italian period. Now, John Lydgate called this poem Dante in English. Dante means Dante or Dante. The author of the Divine Comedy. So, because of that Italian influence, especially Dante's influence is seen in this work, Chaucer was inspired by the works of Dante. So that is why John Lydgate called this poem as Dante in English. So there will be a question like, who called Chaucer's poem, The House of Fame, as Dante in English? Answer John Lydgate. Another poem is an allegory of Chaucer's own life. The poem is more autobiographical than other works because Chaucer uses his own name in this poem. The person in the poem, the narrator is Chaucer himself and he uses his own name. So we can say the poem is more autobiographical than his other poems. There is a focus on understanding his own poetics, that is, the problems of being a writer. So, the problem of fame is discussed here. And he also considers his fame after his death. What would be the fame that he is to be decked with? So, that he also considers in this poem. So, we can say it is more autobiographical. The poem has more than 2,005 lines. There are three books. The poem, The House of Fame is divided into three books. Here, an eagle serves as a guide to the poet. The eagle serves as a guide of the poet Chaucer. The poem is seemingly unfinished. This is one of Chaucer's unfinished poems. And he uses dream vision. So we can say it is an allegorical love vision. As we see in his uh, The Book of the Duchess, here in this poem, that is the House of Fame, also is written in dream vision form. So in a dream vision form, the poet will be troubled and he will go to sleep and in his sleep he will see a dream and the dream will give him relief. That is the usual thing that we see in a dream vision poem. So the house of fame is also written in dream vision format. And it uses octosyllabic Couplets. 
it is kind of a parody of the divine comedy so dante's influence is in dante's work the divine comedy it is this poem is a kind of a parody of the divine comedy now the influence of the poem in 1609 ben johnson and inigo jones appropriated the image of the house of fame for their work the mask of queens so ben johnson and inigo jones made a drama out of the influence of chaucer's work the house of fame so ben johnson's and inigo jones drama mask of queens is influenced by Geoffrey Chaucer's The House of Fame. And the next influence, the next person who was impressed with this work and uh, who has come up with a construction of the same sort is Alexander Pope. So the poem was adopted by Alexander Pope as the Temple of Fame, a vision. So Alexander Pope's work, The Temple of Fame, a vision, is written by inspired from Geoffrey Chaucer's work The House of Fame and another person who was inspired by the poem was John Skelton John Skelton's work A Garland of Laurel is inspired by Chaucer's The House of Fame so remember John Skelton's work A Garland of Laurel is inspired by Chaucer's poem The House of Fame In this poem Chaucer portrays himself as an outsider to love So Chaucer portrays himself as a, an outsider to love And the themes of the works include fame embracing the spheres of nature that heroism love chivalry wisdom conscience virtue fortune myth language and the poetry etc the themes include the nature of fame embracing the spheres of nature that heroism love chivalry wisdom conscience virtue fortune myth language and the poetry etc now the poem's beginning lines it is very very important to remember the beginning lines of the poem so remember it goes like this god turn every dream to good for it's a marvel by the root So the poem begins with lines God turn every dream to good for it is a marvel by the root Now let's see how the poem ends At the last I saw a man whose name I have not to hand yet he seemed to me to be a man of great authority The poem ends with lines At the last I saw a man whose name i have not to hand yet he seemed to me to be a man of great authority now let's analyze the summary of the work so remember the book is divided into three the poem the house of fame is divided into three books first one book first and when the poem opens we see the narrator of the house of fame wonders about the nature of dreams so we know that the narrator is jaffrey chaucer because he identifies himself using his own name that is jaffrey chaucer so the narrator of the house of fame wonders about the nature of dreams he questions why some are beautiful while others terrify so some dreams are beautiful but some are terrific the narrator asserts that 
he has had the most wonderful dream and states that he will share the details. So he sees a dream and after that he starts to narrate his dream. He invokes the god of sleep and a praise. So before beginning his dream, that is telling a story, he invokes first the god of sleep. So remember whom he invokes in the book first. The god of sleep. Now the dream starts. The narrator dreams of a richly adorned temple of glass, which he thinks to be the home of Venus, the Roman goddess of beauty. So when he sees in his dream a glass palace, a temple, he thinks that it is the palace of goddess Venus, who is the Roman goddess of beauty. And he sees an engraving that depicts the fall of Troy to the Greeks as described in Virgil's The Aeneid and the subsequent escape of the character Aeneas. Then on the walls of the palace he sees an engraving that depicts the story of the fall of Troy to the Greeks which is described in Virgil's The Aeneid. So remember, Virgil's Enid is mentioned in Jeffrey Chaucer's poem, The House of Fame. So it shows him a story of Enus and how he escapes, as described in Virgil's the epic work, The Enid. And after this, the narrator also relates the story of Dido's love for Enos when her suicide, when he loved her, when following a command from Jupiter, the king of the Roman gods. So the story continues, the story of Enos. And Enos was loved by Dido. And Enos later leaves Dido. Because he got a command from God Jupiter. So he leaves Dido and after that Dido commits suicide. Because of her sadness of the breakup. Break, breakup with Enos. The telling of events from the Enid ends with Enos arrival in Italy. And the narrator stepping outside of the temple. So the story of Enos continues till Enos escaping and reaching Italy. So after that the narrator, that means Chaucer comes out from the temple of glass. Which he supposes is the temple of the house of Venus, the Roman goddess of beauty. Now, after he comes out from the house, a giant eagle appears above him. The, the first book ends and the beginning of the second book, we can see. The narrator runs, but the eagle easily catches him. The narrator tries to escape from the huge eagle, but the giant eagle catches him. So, after the eagle is is successful in catching the narrator, the narrator faints. The eagle wakes him by speaking in a familiar voice and calling his name. So the eagle starts to talk to him and even calls his name, that is Jeffrey Chaucer. The eagle assures the narrator that he is his friend and that he has been sent by Jupiter, the thunder god whom the eagle sometimes refers to as Job. So eagle says there, no need to be afraid of the eagle because he is not an enemy but a friend. So the eagle has come to help the narrator because Jupiter, the god wants Chaucer to be helped by the eagle so as to 
make him happy in his dream so as to fulfill one of Joseph's dream so the eagle explains that job appreciates the efforts of the narrator who works as a poet so the eagle tells that chaucer as a poet is a very good poet and the god jupiter is happy about his works as a reward job is allowing the narrator to enter the house of fame with the eagle as his guide so chaucer as a famous person as a famous poet is granted as a reward of his contribution to literature for he gets a name written on the house of fame so chaucer is given an entry to the house the eagle calls the narrator by name which reveals that he is Jeffrey Chaucer. So now we know that the eagle calls him Jeffrey Chaucer. This is why we said the poem is autobiographical. It inquires about the nature of fame. So Chaucer himself considers that after he dies, he would be famous. So the house of fame is the natural abode for sounds. So all noises and speech may be heard there. So inside the house of fame, so they enter the house. So he could hear so many sounds. It is a house of sounds. Sounds and different types of noises, speeches, etc. And they approach the house of fame and the poet hears the voices of humanity. So he, inside the house, he could hear voices of humanity. Now begins book three. The narrator of the house of fame evokes Apollo, the god of science and of light, for guidance as he composes book three. So in the last part the narrator invokes apollo so we had seen in the first part when the book begins he invokes the help of the god of sleep now he evokes god apollo the god of science and of light now after coming out from the house of fame the eagle leaves the narrator the narrator now is alone and he climbs to a building at the top of a huge block of ice. The names of famous people are carved into the ice, though many of the names are not clearly written. So he can see the names of people, but so many names are blotted out because of the melting ice. The narrator continues up the hill as he approaches the most beautiful building he has ever seen. The house of fame, also called a rumor. So now he reaches the apex of the beautiful house of fame. The house of fame is filled with talented musicians and storytellers. The narrator reaches the throne room where fame sits. So goddess fame sits in the throne room. She is very tall and slender with many eyes, ears and tongues. So now the writer Chaucer reaches near the goddess of fame. Who is the ultimate power in the house of fame. So when he reaches the, a man asks the narrator what his name is and why he has come to the house of fame. So a man asks him by his name and also the reason for his reaching the. The narrator replies that he knows his own birth 
and it does not wish to be judged by faith. So Chaucer is confident that he knows his own self-worth. So he doesn't want to be judged by anyone, not even by the goddess of fame. And he also tells that he has come instead to seek inspiration for his writing. The narrator and the man leave the house of fame and walk to a house in a valley. So when the narrator reaches there, he could see so many people fighting for fame. But the narrator also says that he doesn't want to be judged by fame, the goddess fame. So he comes out of the house of fame and outside he could see a house in a valley. And he could see the eagle sitting outside. The eagle sits on a stone near the revolving house. The eagle carries the narrator inside. So now he goes to the small hut. A small house made of sticks in a valley. So he enters the house. The people inside the house gossip too much. So now we should understand that fame is categorizing people into different houses. So first we have seen one house, the Chaucer could see people, so many famous people. Then he could reach another house, that means the ultimate house. The most powerful house, there he could see so many other people's names. Then he could see a hut. A small house. There he could see common people. They were all gossiping. So how fame is divided among people. And how people are judged. Based on the contribution to the world. So the last category of people. Who live in a hut made out of sticks. They are the worst. One of the worst categories. That is why they are made to stay in such a hut. So when he was listening to the gossip of the people inside that hut, an unnamed man enters who seems to the narrator to be a man of great authority. So these are the last lines of the poem. So when he stands there, he could see the entry of an unnamed man. But he doesn't know who is that man. Because the poem ends the. So we suppose his dream. That has come to an end. So the poem ends unfinished. The last lines. That's why the last lines you see. How the poem begins and how the poem ends. Begins with lines. God turn every dream to good, for it is a marvel by the rude. And at the poem ends with lines, at the last, I saw a man whose name I have not to hand, yet he seemed to me to be a man of great authority. Then you can see some dots. That means it is unfinished. That's all about Chaucer's The House of Fame. In the next class, we will discuss the biography of Afra Ben. Afra Ben.